Welcome to the Beyond Sunday podcast, where we bring Sunday home. Join us as we dive deeper into First Baptist's weekly sermons, discuss practical applications, and answer your questions. Hello and welcome to the Beyond Sunday podcast. I'm Jordan Upton, but this week, Pastor Jeff Reynolds is not with me. He is well, but he's lost his voice. So, because of that, I'm here to share a, just a brief word of encouragement as we approach Thanksgiving. Now, if you're listening to this the week that this comes out, we encourage you to attend First Baptist's free Thanksgiving dinner on Sunday, November 19th at 4 p.m. in the Social Center. The return of this dinner as a tradition at First Baptist is certainly something for which we can be thankful. During COVID, we couldn't have this meal, but with God's help, we will have this feast again together this year. Now, most of you probably know the story of Thanksgiving. The pilgrims came over on the Mayflower, and after a hard winter, they celebrated a fruitful harvest. Frankly, that's about all I remember about them offhand. And as it turns out, some of the things that I thought I remembered about them were actually about the Puritans, an important but separate group of New England colonists. For today, we're going to focus on the pilgrims and some of the lessons we can learn from these forebears. First, we all know that the pilgrims were strong Christians, but it turns out they also loved and were heavily impacted by the Jewish people. There's a great article by Amy Buckles entitled An Open Secret About the Pilgrims that goes into this relationship. As the story goes, the pilgrims were English Christians persecuted by the Church of England when they didn't conform with all its practices. After they fled England, they moved to the Netherlands, where there was wider religious freedom. Buckles writes, It was in Amsterdam that William Bradford and the rest of his young community came into contact with Jews for the first time. The Jewish people had already been expelled from England for 300 years by the time Bradford left that country. In the Netherlands, religious freedom was a possibility for those wanting to separate from the church and for Sephardic Jews. The pilgrims later braved the Atlantic Ocean and settled in North America at Plymouth, and they carried heavy influence from their Jewish neighbors. According to Buckles, Bradford composed a book of Hebrew vocabulary and phrases and imagined a time when Hebrew would become the language of the New World. He also says the pilgrims did not attend quote-unquote church, but rather went to the meeting house, which is simply an English translation of synagogue. They also enforced Sabbath rest, and their observance of it seems to be heavily based upon Jewish sources. In fact, several generations of the community freely cited from Jewish sources in their own personal journals. This Jewish connection might seem important, maybe even a footnote in history, but given recent events, I think it's actually a critical point. God told Abraham in Genesis 12:3, I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. In the words of one pilgrim named Increase Mather, the Jews who have been trampled upon by all nations shall shortly become the most glorious nation in the whole world, and all other nations shall have them in great esteem and honor. The pilgrims found blessing and inspiration in the Jewish people, and foundational ideas in America today were shaped by that. We should be very thankful for their stay in the Netherlands. The second lesson probably goes without saying, but the pilgrims were grateful. They had a lot to be grateful for, because not everything went smoothly for them. In an interview with JNS.org, Diana Muir Applebaum shares, The separatists at Plymouth did not create an annual holiday of Thanksgiving, rather a holiday that grew in popularity and stabilized into an annual celebration over the course of several decades was later traced back to an event that took place at Plymouth in December 1621. So essentially, the pilgrims did not observe a standardized Thanksgiving holiday, but they did seek to cultivate thankfulness based upon what happened in that year. Rabbi Elias Lieberman adds, During that very hard winter before the first Thanksgiving, it is recorded that food became so scarce in some settlements that the daily ration of food per person per day was five kernels of corn. In order to remember those harsh times and maintain their gratitude for the plenty they now enjoyed, some New Englanders started the custom of putting five kernels of corn on each plate at their feast. I love that custom. That's just such a cool little factoid from history. 
Gratitude really is a fundamental part of godliness and the walk as a Christian. As parents, we we try to make our kids say please and thank you so that they have good manners, but it's just as important for us to remind ourselves to be thankful for what God has given us. God specifically gave a kind of sacrifice in Leviticus, the Todah, or the Thanksgiving sacrifice, so that anyone who wanted to thank God had a powerful way to do it. So the way it worked was that participants would invite friends and family to join them in eating from this Todah sacrifice, making it a perfect opportunity to share about why they were thankful to God. It might have been for a miraculous salvation, or it might have been for some great bounty that God brought to them, but it was a way of telling people around you why God was so good and why you were so thankful to him. This sacrifice and the harvest festival of Sukkot, or tabernacles, were probably really influential in the first Thanksgiving and the practices that ensued in following years. May we carry this spirit of gratitude with us this week of Thanksgiving. The third and final lesson is that the pilgrims were disciplined and even strict on themselves, but they were loving to others. In 2020, on the 400th anniversary of Plymouth's founding, CBN Newswatch shared several stories about the pilgrims and their interactions with Native Americans. In one desperate time, pilgrims found some corn that Native Americans had stored away, and they took it and ate it. But when they later spoke with the Native Americans, they made sure to find out who the corn belonged to so that they could repay for that food. Another account was that a pilgrim murdered a Native American. But the pilgrims did not overlook the transgression or treat the Native Americans as lesser beings. In fact, their court found the murderer guilty, and they hanged him for his crime. This kind of honesty is this kind of honesty and self-accountability is rare these days. We live in an age of disinformation and misinformation. And as disciples of the way, the truth, and the life, we have to be truthful and sincere. When we err, we need to apologize and admit we were wrong. That's hard to do, but that's the calling we have as disciples. I hope this brief history lesson was edifying for you. The pilgrims weren't perfect, and we certainly don't share all of their beliefs, but we can learn much from how they held high standards for themselves and how they loved God and their neighbor. May you and your family have a wonderful Thanksgiving. God bless you, and thank you for listening. Thank you for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to our channel. To submit a question about Sunday's sermon, the Bible, or walking with Jesus, click the link in the episode description. Our hosts today are Pastor Jeff Reynolds and myself, Jordan Upton. Our engineer is Elliot Beckley, and our editors are Chadwick Walden and Fuying Ying Engdahl.